أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to our second class on chapter 5 So we will start from where we left off The question we had when we left was or the thing that we discussed when we left was that there is no difference between the uh, person who is honest and hardworking and the person who's honest and hardworking and eventually does something unethical. You cannot see the difference uh, between the two of them and this is what we discussed um, last. So what is the reason why people do fraud and the theory of the fraud triangle uh, says that there are three things either uh, working together or working by itself e each one of these things that cause people to uh, commit the fraud and as you can see here there are three three things here one is pressure one is opportunity and one is rationalization pressure is of different kinds and I'm sure you have experienced pressure and I'm sure you are experiencing pressure right now due to the midterms right am I right am I right or am I right are you under pressure yes so you know sometimes people are under uh, financial pressure pressure people are sometimes under pressure feel they feel pressure because they feel that um, they have to maintain a certain social status or they have to keep up with their with their peers with their relatives and so forth so they feel some type of financial pressure some sometimes people feel pressure to uh, keep their company number one in the competition etc so there are pressures that people feel and we're going to talk about different types of pressures and then the second thing that people uh, feel uh, or have is the opportunity which is the chance of doing the fraud and not getting caught after doing it so that's the opportunity right so the chance that the student might have when the instructor or the proctor of the exam walks out of the room briefly right uh, there is the opportunity now not that not to say that everybody will use that opportunity but the opportunity is there to to cheat if the exam uh, invigilator or proctor leaves the room so similarly in a, in, a, in, a, in a company environment if there is not uh, proper scrutiny supervising etc then the opportunity is there and then the third thing is rationalization which is telling uh, oneself somebody telling himself or herself that it is okay to do the fraud because of various different reasons one of them could be it is something that everybody's doing it right everybody's doing this so uh, what is wrong if I do it so these are rationalizations which are uh, lies that people tell themselves when they do the fraud right so let's explore this some more we have the first we talked about which is pressure we have different types of pressures that people f feel uh, and among them are personal lifestyle pressures right we're going to talk about it some more lifestyle pressure sometimes people want to maintain a particular lifestyle and the salary or the income the person is getting is uh, let's say 10,000 rials and they have uh, a preference for a lifestyle that requires 30,000 rials so they need the extra money right uh, uh, emotional Right. So these are, you know, financial pressures that are uh, individual lifestyle pressures or there could be emotional pressure that could be put on somebody by uh, their family members. So the husband could put pressure on the wife, the wife could, pres could pres put pressure on the husband, parents could put pressure on the children, emotional pressure to do well, right? so i'm sure you know what that what that feels like so the, these causes people these cause people to do things that uh, are not something that they're supposed to do at the 
company level, there could be industry conditions. So the industry conditions are such that if you want to be ahead, uh, you want to do better than other companies and so forth, then uh, you feel this pressure to do better and, and you cannot do it by performing well. So you can do it by lying in the financial statements, right? Uh, the management characteristics, we talked about it briefly. Tone at the top is one of the things that when your management is not ethical, the people underneath the management also tend to do things that are not ethical. So they feel pressure by the management to do things that are not ethical. You can stop and ask me questions anytime. I'm going to continue, inshallah. The opportunity is uh, there. Uh, if if somebody wants to do the fraud and, and not get caught, if there is an opportunity to commit the fraud, conceal the fraud, and convert the uh, money that somebody stole. So, uh, you know, commit is doing the actual fraud. Concealing is hiding what they have done, right? Hiding the money by converting. So if you if somebody earned if you know if somebody earned money uh, unethically, illegally, and they cannot take it to the bank, they might go and buy uh, land with the money or buy some other asset which is not uh, visible, right? Uh, some in some other country, some other land, etc. So converting the proceeds from the fraud. Right, and if, if there is opportunity to do that, if you know someone can do that without getting caught, then that increases the possibility of people doing fraud. And the third thing is the rationalization, which is made up of three things the attitude, the justification, and the lack of personal integrity. Now, the attitude is the attitude pers the, a person has towards life which drives the justification and lack of personal integrity. And I want to talk about this thing uh, and emphasize this. If you don't learn anything from me in this entire course, I want you to learn this one thing. And it is very important. It is very important in life. And that is personal integrity. What is personal integrity? Personal integrity is your personal self standard for doing the right thing. You want to do the right thing. You don't care if everybody else is not doing the right thing. If everybody is doing something wrong, you yourself will not do it. Your personal standard does not depend upon the environment. Your personal standard does not depend upon what others are doing. Now, it is very difficult. You know, peer pressure is real. You know what peer pressure is. You have experienced it, I'm sure. Things that you have to do because your friends are doing it. Have you faced it? Anyone of you faced what I'm talking about? Things you not really necessarily want to do or the way you, you know, not necessarily want to dress, but you're doing it because you have pressure from your friends. Anyone experience what I'm talking about? Is this real? Have you experienced this? Right? So this is very difficult. It is real. And if you have personal standards, and the older you get, the stronger it becomes because, you know, the more established in life you are going to be. Right now, you might have to do something or say something to please other people, which, which you might not want to do or say. But having a personal integrity, having a strong personal integrity. Now, I'm not talking about, you know, silly things where you're just arguing with people for uh, stupid reasons. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about something that is unethical, something that is not something that is not good to do, something that is harmful to do. So three students are um, teasing another student. And because you want to be a part of this group, you are also participating in that, right? While you, in yourself, inside yourself, you don't think that this is the right thing to do. At that point, you have to distinguish yourself, right? And because of this, you will be respected and not rejected. You follow? So 
have a personal integrity, a standard that is not dependent upon what others are thinking or doing. Is this clear? Am I making this point clear, right? What personal integrity is? If you do have that, then this problem is not going to be there of justification that I have done this because I was feeling pressure or others are doing it or, uh, you know, nobody's getting caught. All of these uh, will not come to you. You will have a personal standard. Okay. Uh, the fraud is more likely to occur when people feel the pressure, the opportunity is available, and people have low integrity. So this is what I am talking about. If someone has low integrity, then if the whole group is doing it, the person will join. If the whole group is honest, the person will be honest. So these three things, a combination of them, causes the fraud to happen more so than if there were low pressure and low opportunity and people have high integrity, right? So it is very difficult even with uh, for people with high integrity to fight a corrupt environment, right? But you have to try. You have to uh, disengage otherwise. If you lose friends, so be it, right? If you lose friends, so be it, okay? All right. Now, the common pressures that accountants face in a corporate environment are, number one, it can be put into two categories, inflate earnings or stock price, meaning increasing the earnings of the company while in the financial statements while the real earnings are not that much, or increasing the stock price in the financial statement, right, by making some bogus adjustments. And executives do that for several reasons. Uh, number one here is bonus. So if the stock price goes up or the earnings go up, they will get a bonus, right? So they feel pressure that uh, to get the bonus, they have to do that uh, this dishonest act. Now, increase in wealth held in stock. So some executives have a lot of company stocks. You know, most people who are very wealthy, most of their money is in, in, in stock, right? For example, Bill Gates and um, uh, Jeff Bezos, they, uh, most of their wealth is in stock. Now, they're not dishonest, inshallah, but what I'm saying is some people could be, right? Uh, because their wealth will increase if the financial statements look better. Uh, preserving reputation or job, right? Reputation of the company or the personal job uh, in the company could also put pressure to increase the earnings. Covering the inability to generate cash. So if somebody's supposed to operate the business increasing by increasing sales and generating cash and if they're not able to do that, they could simply lie on the financial statement too, to show that the earnings are more. Uh, obtaining financing, borrowing money, if the financial statements look better, the bank uh, extends loans so if they cannot get the loans through the real picture of the of the company they may show something that is uh, false in the financial statements to comply with bond and other covenants so there are certain uh, instruments such as uh, bonds and notes etc that are out in the market to investors and it requires the company to have a particular level of income or wealth and assets and so forth and to maintain that the company might lie on the financial statements while the company's performance is not that great. So these are reasons uh, or pressures that executives uh, encounter while uh, they increase the inflate the earnings or stock price. The opposite of that is to deflate earnings to avoid tax. So to show the government that they don't have enough income so that they can reduce the tax. And, you know, this is the opposite. So they might uh, hide income and earnings from the government so that they don't have to pay taxes. Okay. Any questions so far? You can ask me questions anytime. Okay. Individual pressures 
that people face number one is living beyond means so the person has a 10,000 real income and has a lifestyle of 20,000 real income so they're living beyond their means they can only afford to drive a Toyota and they want to drive a Mercedes right living beyond the means so where is the extra money going to come from high debt or expenses you know borrowing money to buy things and then later not able to pay the loan back right or increasing expenses right living luxury, buying luxury items or eating in luxury restaurants, staying in luxury hotels, flying, flying first class when you only can buy a, 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 an economy class ticket, etc. So these are things that put pressure on people to earn extra income. There could be a situation where the person has inadequate income, meaning their income is not enough to even live a basic lifestyle with their family and children and so forth. Now, this is something that we have to keep an eye on. We have to see the people that are working for us, people who are working for us, do they have enough income to, to support their families? We need to look into that and not just pay something that we think is you know, enough to get, get labor. Because if people might come and work uh, because they don't have any other choice, but if the income is inadequate, it's not enough for them, then they might find other ways to earn the money unethically. Number four, financial losses, right? These two, financial losses and bad investments, you know, this comes from investing money in places where uh, the, in the investment may have gone bad, right? And people feel pressure to regain that. Financial losses could also happen involuntary, like from natural disasters or theft, may somebody's wealth may be stolen, etc. So this creates pressure on people to regain their status. And number six, tax avoidance. You know, some people feel that they must uh, reduce their tax no matter what, you know, pay the minimum tax no matter what, even if they have to lie on their tax returns. And in, you know, Qatar, alhamdulillah, we don't have individual tax returns, but in countries where, where there is, you know, people feel pressure to reduce the tax, you know, not pay taxes because they think that paying the taxes uh, is just a waste of money. But on the other hand, if you think about it, you know, where, you know, the government needs to collect taxes from the, from the people uh, to operate the government, right? Where else the government is going to get money from? Not every government is, is, is wealthy, you know. So people have to uh, support the uh, activities that the government does by paying taxes. For example, no matter how much money you have, you're not going to go and build a, a bridge or, 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 or fix the road, right? Where is that money going to come from? It comes from the taxpayer's money. Uh, unless, you know, of course, there are governments who have a lot of natural resources and so forth, you know, they can use that like we, are, we have, alhamdulillah, in Qatar. So, uh, the tax issue is not really an issue for us at the time, alhamdulillah. Okay. Uh, emotional pressure that individuals feel, number one, greed, you know, wanting more, right? Wanting more and more. If you, if you ask somebody how much more, how much income do you need? How much income do you need? No matter who you ask, they're going to say just a little bit more, right? Just a little bit more. So there is no end to how much money you need unrecognized performance when people someone has been working for a company for a long period of time and they're working hard and their their performance is helping the company but they don't get any recognition now this is not always money that it recognizes performance right there are other things for example uh, promotions or uh, just simply recognizing the work right uh, helps people continue right makes them work harder uh, job dissatisfaction. Somebody may be working in a job that they don't like and they don't have any other choice. So, you know, they might do something unethical because uh, they're just having a miserable time, right? Number four, fear of losing the job, right? So if somebody feels pressure that if they don't do this unethical act, their boss might fire them. This creates emotional pressure on them. Number five, power or control. So if somebody wants to be at the top, right, 
wants to be powerful, wants the company to be at the top of all other companies, or individually wants to climb up to a place, uh, they feel emotional pressure to do that, right? To have control. Uh, this creates people to do uh, things that are not ethical. Number six, beating the system. Beating the system is uh, doing the act of dishonesty and not getting caught, right? So this is some type of uh, sickness people have that they want to see, can I do it and get away with it? Not necessarily they need the money, but, but they want to see if they can beat the system, right? Number seven, frustration. Frustration is when you're trying to accomplish something and you're not able to accomplish it. Have you ever experienced this frustration? Frustration is you're trying and you're trying and you're trying and nothing happens, right? You worked really hard, you took, you studied for long hours, and then the exam grade is not that great. Have you experienced this? This is called frustration, right? And this should not be uh, the case of, uh, this should not be the case of a Muslim in any situation uh, because Rasulullah sallallahu said that uh, there is a reality to everything right there is a reality there is a height of everything iman. the reality of iman is whether if you truly have iman or not the test of that is for you to know that anything that happened could not have been avoided. It would have happened no matter what you would have done. And to know that if it didn't happen, if something did not happen, you wanted it to happen, it didn't happen, no matter what you did, it would not have happened because it's written like that, right? So to know these two things, right? Anything that happened would not have been avoided and anything that did not happen could not be accomplished. Right? If you know these two things, then your life becomes easy. The only thing that you can do, the only thing that you can do is put in a reasonable amount of effort. When I mean a reasonable amount of effort, I don't mean exhausting yourself all the time, maximum possible energy. It's not possible for you to put in maximum possible effort in everything. It's just not possible. You cannot live life like that. Right? So whatever is reasonably possible whatever is reasonably possible so you can study two hours a day three hours a day if that's possible for you while you have you know a decent life having a good night's sleep enjoying yourself with your family and friends a little bit praying on time doing a little bit of things that you would like to do and then you can study three hours whatever you can accomplish through that three hours alhamdulillah no problem right and please know for sure that performance, academic performance in exams and so forth, right? Academic performance in exams and so forth are not connected with your success in life. What is success in life? That is another story. But if you just uh, define success with accomplishment in your career, etc., etc., it is not connected with your GPA at all, right? So the best student in our class, right, the best, by far, academically best, no one was close to him, right, has been unemployed for quite some time and we are trying to find something for him. Are you following? Right? Academically, he was better than any one of us. I could never be anywhere close to him, right? So this is Qadr and he is, he's got very strong Iman, alhamdulillah, and he is not you know he's handling the matter and it can happen to anyone right so this is life you're tested sometimes with uh, more and you're tested sometimes with less in all situations you should be thankful so frustration should not come are you following are you with me are you there are you listening right very good so do what you can reasonably for anything in life exam or anything in life, right? And then 
Alhamdulillah for the outcome. Whatever the outcome is, because the outcome is a test to you from Allah to see whether you have shukr in the time of difficulty and ease, right? So you have to have shukr in the time of difficulty and ease and accept it, right? Alhamdulillah, it is good. It is all good, okay? All right. Uh, number eight is non-conformity. Uh, somebody just some people just like to uh, break rules, right? So that causes them to do the the fraud or dishonest acts, non-conformity, not following the regulations. And number nine is envy, hasad, which is uh, why do they have it? Why don't I have it? Type mentality. And again, this is not good, right? Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi always told us to look at people who have less than us. Always look at people less than who have less than us except in uh, two situations one is knowledge if somebody has more knowledge islamic knowledge then you would want for yourself not that you want that person to lose it you would want that for yourself so somebody you know 10 surahs you memorize 10 surah 10 surahs and somebody memorized 15 you should want to be like that person right um, and the other is if somebody is spending money uh, in charity for the sake of Allah, he's spending money, and you also have the desire that if I had money, I would also do good like he's doing, then that is also good. This is not envy in the sense of hasad, but you want to be like that person. So these two situations are okay, right? Otherwise, I want a better you know, car, I want better clothes, etc., etc. This is nonsense, you know, all of this will perish. All of this will go away. The Mercedes will be above the ground while the driver will go underground very soon. You follow what I'm saying? So, you know, this is useless stuff. Okay? Happiness is something else. Happiness is something else. Happiness is being happy with what you have, not what you want. Okay? Alhamdulillah. All right. Uh, lifestyle pressures that people have, in, inshallah, not in our community, but in other places, gambling, right? Gambling, uh, drug or alcohol. This was uh, not something that was a problem at all when I was growing up, you know, in the, in the 80s, 70s and 80s in Khalij. I, was, I grew up as a child uh, in Khalij. Uh, and this was not a problem at all at that time. It's still not a problem, but we need to be careful uh, that this does not get into our society. Family uh, or, uh, or peer pressure. This is something that we all feel, all have, you know, pressure for family, from family and peer. And that's my whole talk that I gave you is you should not feel this pressure, right? You should have a straight talk, no matter who it is that is putting pressure on you. Even if that person is elder to you, you should sit down, you should gather yourself, you should calm down, and you should discuss that, you know, what you're, what you're putting pressure on me for is something that is causing me to have great distress. I might have health problems, I might have other issues, so I cannot handle this, and this is not something that I would really like to focus on, right? No matter what this thing is, if this is graduating with a certain GPA or completing a particular degree, you know, all of these things, right, you will know soon, have really very little meaning in life, okay? All right, so, you know, um, we are talking about a lot of things that are related to fraud and ethics and so forth, but these are things in real things in life. You know, they are perhaps way more important than anything else that you learn about internal control or accounting information system and so forth. Okay. Common opportunities that uh, people have in companies to do the fraud, lack of internal controls. So the internal controls, if they're not there, Nobody's watching, nobody's reviewing, you know, you are the person who signs the check, you're the person who approves, you know, it creates opportunity. Failure to enforce controls. So there may be rules, but nobody follows them. So that is failure to enforce the controls, right? Excessive trust in key employees. So th there may be employees who've been, been in the company for 10, 20 years, and nobody checks their work, they're trusted. It is good to trust them, but it is also good for them to know that their work may be checked, right? 
incompetent supervisory personnel. This is very important. Uh, technical competency is not the same as supervisory competency. So if somebody might be technically sound, somebody might be a very good accountant, but they may not be very good in supervising another accountant, right? So it's important to put people in, in charge who are capable of managing other people, who are emotionally intelligent, right? Who can uh, feel the pressure others are feeling, feel the emotional distress others are feeling. If they can feel that, right, then it is easier for them to manage those people, right? Number five is inattention to details. Inattention to details is a very big thing in, in accounting, and that is we are dealing with calculations and numbers and details of paperwork. So if um, you do not properly look at the documents that come through your desk, then uh, you might miss something. And this can especially happen when there is inadequate staff, in, which is number six. So you have to do too much work, right? You have to do too much. You have to do more than what you're supposed to or, or you're capable of handling, right? So that causes the opportunity for doing the fraud. All right, so here are some examples of common rationalizations that people have when they're doing the fraud. I was just borrowing the money, right? So somebody stole money and when they're caught, they said, I was just borrowing, I was going to give it back to the company. It was not hurting anyone, just the corporation, right? That's a silly, silly excuse. Everybody does it, you have heard that before. I have been underpaid for 20 years, it was owed to me, so you know, because they were underpaid, it's justified for them to steal the money from the company. Or someone might say, it was not for me, it was for somebody else, right? I may, the person may have given it to charity and so forth. Okay. And then we have rationalizations from hackers who say the malicious code helped expose security flaws. So because I did that, now they know that there is a problem with the security fraud. Uh, security, there is a problem with the security, right? There is a flaw in the security. Uh, they might say it was an accident. I really didn't want to do it. Or they might say there was an experiment that went bad, right? Or they might say that they did not keep up their security, right? They did not keep their security up to date. So it's their problem. I'm going to try, and if they don't keep the security up to date, then you know this will happen again or they might say i did not alter or delete any files right so i just went there i looked at the stuff i did not harm anybody so these are some common rationalizations that hackers computer hackers they they, uh, they might say right so i'm going to leave you with two questions right the first question is do you believe that taking an unlicensed copy of a software is computer fraud? Copying a software that uh, you're supposed to buy a license for, is that fraud? Let's see what people say. Online is a software. Is it okay or not? Yes or no? Is it fraud or not? If it is fraud, say yes. If it is not fraud, say no. I have one no <laughs> so far. Right, so 10 people responded. 90% say it's fraud. It is fraud, right? It is fraud. Some people might say, well, they're rich, right? They're rich. Microsoft is rich and the other software companies are rich. It doesn't matter whether they're rich or they're, they're poor, right? Even if you are cheated by someone, you should not cheat anyone, right? You should not cheat anyone. The second question is, do you think it's a crime to browse through someone else's computer if your intentions are not bad, right? 
just your friend's computer is open, right? And it is fraud, right? It is. Well, we don't say is something like fraud in this case. It is unethical. It is not something that you should do, right? This is not something that you should do. Now, may I ask you something? Uh, if it is your child's computer, the child is 10 years old, is it okay for you to check the child's computer to see what's going on? Is it okay to do that? Tansia says yes. It is okay to do, right? It is okay to do and, you know, the uh, for the benefit of the child, absolutely. It is okay to do uh, because the child does not know better. So you have to guide the child so that the child does not fall into something that is dangerous, right? So you have to know this very, very delicate balance. You have to know when something is right and when something is not right. And that is the more difficult part. It is more difficult to know what is right and what is wrong than to actually do the right thing. Are you following? So it is very important to know what is right before you can do or not do the right thing. All right? So I'm going to stop here, inshallah. I know you're all overwhelmed with exams and so forth. Um, do you have any questions for me? Okay, inshallah, I will see you uh, in this class again on Tuesday. Okay, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa